Welcome back to the Now That's Weird radio show on TV. It's me, Ross Hemsworth. We're still here in Laughlin at the wonderful Aquarius Hotel Resort Casino, or should I say Casino Resort, on the banks of the Colorado River. And my guest today is Travis Walton. Now, Travis, I actually, about three, four months ago, I think it was, saw the film Fire in the Sky. I wasn't familiar with the case at the time because my background is a different type of research and I was amazed by the story so obviously started to look into it and found out that it wasn't your story they'd done the whole Hollywood thing on it and messed around with it as they always do but let's start at the beginning tell us the true story of what actually happened to you well um, there was actually seven of us in the woods rather than uh, I think there was five in the movie but a uh, seven man crew uh, cutting trees in the woods and we were headed home after a hard day's work and we saw this uh, object uh, hovering near the road and stopped the truck and I got out and went closer to it and bam, I was hit by a powerful bolt of energy that uh, the uh, guys and the, you know, the rest of the crew uh, thought had killed me. So they uh, took off uh, in panic and um, they went in and got the sheriff and uh, came back out and and couldn't find me and the search continued for five days and uh, um, I guess um, they were unable to find even a trace of it they had uh, over 50 men um, uh, some on horseback uh, tracking dogs uh, helicopters just combed the entire area and uh, you know some expert trackers looking and there wasn't a trace uh, uh, the, apparently the tracking dogs were not able to find anything beyond the clearing there. Now, from the film, was it true that uh, any members of the team that were with you were actually accused of uh, attacking you? Yes, the entire crew was actually accused of murdering me, and uh, there was, uh, you know, that was seriously considered by the sheriff and many people in the community. So they said, "Well, we didn't kill him, and uh, we'll take lie detector tests to prove it." And so the state police uh, uh, polygraph expert came in and tested them in. And when they passed, uh, that really <laughs> sort of changed their tune. But um, uh, I had uh, just went through a really horrific experience, um, waking up on board and, and uh, realizing that man, eventually that I wasn't in a hospital. I was, you know, inside this thing. And... Uh, it was just terrifying. It was just something that really, really traumatized me. Um, I was uh, eventually rendered unconscious, and and the next thing I knew, I woke up on the cold pavement, uh, looked up to see this craft uh, take off into the sky. Um, I went down into the town, uh, called my family. They came and got me. And I, st I thought it was the same night because I, I, you know, was only conscious for a short period. So it was quite a shock to learn how much time had gone by, five days, you know. And um, I was really traumatized. So my uh, brother took me off to uh, Phoenix to try to find some medical uh, help and, you know, get away from the crowds. Because, you know, during the time I was gone, this became a worldwide story. There were... Um, you know, media people from all over the, uh, a lot of foreign countries and all over the United States. And so, you know, it was a pretty high-pressure situation. Uh, and, uh, you know, I was just so traumatized. There was just no, really no place to turn. Now, I can imagine it must have been traumatic for you. There's no question about it. But did you recall any of the things that happened during the period you, uh, you were out, or was this after regression? Well, um, I was just so traumatized that just talking about it, uh, I would break down. And so 
I, I didn't really even try to tell much until the hypnosis and the, and the main goal there uh, was um, to try to allow me to separate the fear from the memory so that I was able to finally verbalize these without this you know overpowering fear so that was the first time I got everything that happened out in one narrative that uh, uh, that the researchers uh, observed now what sort of things did they find through regression what what actually happened well I woke up I was lying on my back uh, I thought I was in a hospital at first. I knew I had been hurt because I was in a lot of pain. I was having trouble breathing. There was a light above me. Um, but when I finally, you know, I was in and out for a while. But, you know, I, when I finally clear, cleared up to where I could see that these weren't doctors standing over me, I saw these creatures, and I just flipped out. At that point, I, you know, somehow got enough strength to get up and get this stuff off of me and, and uh, back away from them, and they came towards me. Uh, these these beings, they were humanoid, you know, two arms and two legs, but not not like people at all. It was it was pretty terrible. But, you know, they just seemed to. Their eyes were just so. Uh, I don't know. It just they could just look right into me, you know. And um, I. Uh, made threatening uh, motions towards them as they approached me and they suddenly stopped turned and left and here I was in this cramped little space dimly lit and I could hardly breathe it was just made for a real panicky panicky feeling and they went out uh, through the door and had gone down this little passageway to the right so I was afraid they'd come back and so I, I went the other way looking for a way out. I guess I was thinking that this thing was still in the woods, but apparently it wasn't. But um, I was, you know, uh, went through this little passageway and found this other little uh, room where um, I could see stars. I don't know whether they were, you know, uh, it was a viewing screen of where it was at at the moment or if it was some kind of a just a map or something projected but um, a, a man came in at least I thought he was a man at first uh, and took me out of there and uh, when we went out of this craft at this point it was inside of a larger building well I don't know if it's a building or a larger craft it's just a, a large enclosure could have been a craft or a hangar type building somewhere uh, and uh, it, w there was, it was a lot easier to breathe outside. That was a relief, and uh, it was much more brightly lit. Uh, the light was a lot, uh, a lot more like uh, sunlight, natural light. But I tried to look around, but he was in a hurry for some reason, and he took me out of that room down a, a hallway, just a regular-sized hallway, um, and to another room, uh, much smaller room than the big enclosure but still a normal room and uh, he left me with some other human looking people who were dressed like him and uh, uh, I started trying to get them to answer my questions he wouldn't answer any questions but I thought it was because he was wearing this uh, helmet over his head but, but they weren't wearing any helmets and they wouldn't answer me either so I started to Resist when they wanted me to lay on this table. I was, I'd had enough of laying on tables, you know. Um, but uh, I, I was still pretty weak, and they were very strong. It seemed, you know, they overpowered me very easily. And uh, the one of them, the female, put an a, a oxygen mask sort of a thing over my face. And I was, you know, panicked enough. I was able to get one hand free just long enough to get my finger under the edge of that mask and try to pull it off. But um, I blacked out before I could get it off and uh, that's when I woke up on the pavement and uh, looked around like it was dark I could see the lights of uh, the, the town I recognized the town down below and so I ran down to these uh, telephone booths and uh, made a call to my family <laughs>